Hello everyone, it is I, Marcus W. As you can see, I have a microphone. I'm just uh, giving it a try, so hopefully you guys can hear me, and hopefully I don't have to edit out the sound effects of cars going past my house. Now, today is June 2020, and summer is nearly here, but I'm going to be staying indoors for pretty much the whole of summer. Partly because the weather doesn't look good, I mean, it's actually raining right now as I speak. But also because, well, you might have seen the news, it's just too dangerous outside, it's not safe at all. There's killer wasps everywhere. And a lot of people are doing the same thing, staying indoors, being safe. So um, those people who are doing that, if you're bored, then um, here's an idea. Um, you may want to take a look at some kid shows I used to watch during my childhood. Someone recommended this idea sometime after my 30th birthday. They said, why don't you share some kid shows that you watched? I thought, yeah, I'll, I'll do that. I have some friends who are born and raised in 21st century, so let's uh, show them some 20th century TV shows. So it's quite a list, so I'm not going to go through every single show on this video. I'm probably going to divide it up into two parts. So in this first part, I'm going to share some uh, really young kid shows. The shows that would be suitable for children, say between 0 to 10 roughly. And then I'll talk about some comedy shows that I used to watch. So if you're looking forward to seeing what kind of shows I watched, do give it a thumbs up. And if you're looking forward to part two, do subscribe to my channel and hit the uh, notification bell so you know when I upload the second part. Now I can't show you any actual clips, you know, copyright and all that. Some shows are copyrighted because they're on DVD, and some are not, but it's hard to tell which is which. But I can show you screenshots, and there may be one or two spoiler alerts, so just bear that in mind. So I've made a list of the shows on my uh, iPhone, uh, starting with um, Thomas the Tank Engine, personal favourite of mine. I think you guys already knew that. The first four series are my favourites because they're actually based on the books, because the book came before the TV series. I think this year marks its uh, 75th anniversary. Now if you didn't know, the people who made Thomas, they also made another series called Tugs, which is all about a, a fleet of tugboats from the 1920s. Now I didn't actually see the series on TV, I saw it on YouTube. Unfortunately I saw Tugs via the American version, Salty's Lighthouse. Yeah, uh, best to avoid that. Yeah, don't watch Salty's Lighthouse, watch Tugs, that's much better. And for those of you who saw my uh, 30th birthday video, uh, the reason I liked Thomas was because the faces didn't move, so it was easy for me to understand about emotions. So there are other shows that are like that as well. So there's Fireman Sam, which is about a fireman called Sam, who works at Pontypandy Fire Station in Wales. Postman Pat, a postman called Pat, and his uh, black and white cat Jess, they deliver posts to all the people of Greendale. And Noddy, a wooden doll, and uh, we see all his adventures in Toyland and Bob the Builder, a builder called Bob and his talking vehicles always fixing and building things. Now some of these shows you might be familiar with because like Thomas there have been some upgrades, you know they've gone from like stop motion to CGI. Yeah, stick to the original series, the original series is much better, trust me. Also some of the shows have had US versions of them, yet yeah, don't watch US versions. In fact, I want to take this opportunity to ask, people of America, why do you insist on doing US versions of our TV shows? I mean, why do you do it, honestly? Personally, I think it's offensive. It's like they've got something against our accents. Well, FYI, there's a girl who thinks I have a lovely accent. Now, with Postman Pat, there's uh, two things you need to know. Uh, there are two other shows that were made by the same people. So the first one is called Bertha an AI machine who lives in a factory and makes all kinds of things. So she makes watering cans, garden gnomes, jigsaw puzzles, windmills, etc, etc. The other show is Charlie Chalk. It's got a very catchy theme. Charlie Chalk, Charlie Chalk. It's all about a clown called Charlie Chalk who does a lot of magic tricks and he lives on an island called Merry Twit. The other fact about Postman Pat is that it was originally created by John Cunliffe and he also created and starred in some episodes of Rosie and Jim. Now, Rosie and Jim are two ragdolls who come to life 
and they live on a narrow boat called the Ragdoll. Uh, they do a lot of exploring and uh, they sometimes help out and sometimes they play tricks which can get them into trouble and nobody knows that they can come to life. Only children know that they can come to life. Also on the Ragdoll they have a friend, a wooden duck called Duck, who quacks a lot. <laughs> And there are also some uh, Rosie and Jim education videos, uh, two of them, all involving reading and writing. I don't know if they've been uploaded to YouTube, but if you can find them, they're actually very useful. Now, the company that created Rosie and Jim is called Ragdoll Productions, and they've also created TV shows like Tots TV, In the Night Garden, and Teletubbies. They also created uh, another one of my favorites, Brum. Brum is a little vintage car who comes to life. He lives in a museum just outside Birmingham and uh, when the curator's not looking he would leave the museum and go and explore the town. Most of his adventures involve helping other people and uh, catching criminals as well. There is a series 1 episode that is very similar to the Thomas the Tank Engine episode Stepney Gets Lost. So if you found that episode disturbing you might want to give this one a miss. But Brum is a very good show. Uh, the first two series I recommend. An interesting fact about Brum is that he was built by Rex Garrard, the late Rex Garrard, who, if you're a Robot Wars fan, you know he's the man who created Cassius, the robot that invented the self-writing mechanism. Before we go any further, I should mention, yes, I am aware of Biohazard, but let's not get into an argument about it, okay? There is one children's show that's been going on for a very long time, and uh, has always been a favorite, Sooty. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Sooty is a little yellow teddy bear who doesn't talk and he was born in the 1940s in Blackpool. Now Sooty is a magical bear and uh, he's a bit like Peter Pan. I mean, he can't fly like Peter Pan, but you know how Peter Pan doesn't get any older even though he's been around for centuries? Well, Sooty's like that, so he was born in the 40s but he still acts and thinks like a five-year-old child. A lot of his adventures involve his friends at Sweep, the little grey dog who squeaks a lot, uh, Sue, a talking panda, and the troublesome little cousin Scampy. Sooty audiences may know about Richard Goodell, the current Sooty presenter, but uh, I of course watch the ones with Matthew Corbett, the son of Harry Corbett who discovered Sooty, you could say. If you haven't seen any of the episodes that Matthew presented, do go and check them out. The shows I mainly remember, some of the later shows of the Sooty Show, which around that time was near its 40th anniversary. It was actually in the Guinness Book of Records of being the longest running British television show. Then later on I saw Sooty & Co, uh, Matthew's final series, where Sooty and the gang are running a shop in Manchester. And like Rosie and Jim, uh, Sooty also has some education videos. I think there's about eight, but the one I mainly liked was Start to Read 2. That was my favourite. Not only do I have autism, but I'm also dyslexic, so I can't read or write as fluently as normal people can. So that video really did help me, so thank you Sooty. Talking of teddy bears, there's a cartoon you might want to have a look at uh, called Super Ted. It was made in the 1980s. It's about a teddy bear. It's called Super Ted because Mother Nature gave him some special powers. And with these powers, he flies around the Earth and the universe helping people, along with his uh, alien friend, Spotty, from the planet Spot. And most of his adventures involve uh, fighting the villain Texas Pete and his two dumb henchmen, Bulk and Skeleton. If you do have a look at this cartoon, you may be interested to know that uh, there are some uh, voices that you might recognise, including um, a doctor. So those shows I've just mentioned are more like for the uh, younger audience. So now we'll, um, we'll move it up to the next level, and it's a lot of comedy shows, this one. And we'll start with Bodger and Badger. It's all about a man called Simon Bodger, who lives with a talking and badly behaved badger who loves mashed potato. There are nine series, uh, some episodes are available on YouTube, though series 4 and 5 is very difficult to come across. Now Simon and Badger, they do a lot of work in different places. Uh, they sometimes work in a cafe, or a school, or a theme park, or a hotel, and uh, their bosses are very mean, rude, and selfish. And in the end they get covered in mashed potato, and they deserve it. 
I mentioned Badger is very naughty, but there are times where he does mean well and he always helps out. And he's always insulting the horrible people. Like for example, when they were living in a flat, their landlady was Mrs. Drabel. He calls her Mrs. Dribble. But it's very important that uh, the horrible bossy people don't know he's around, otherwise Simon could get into trouble. Another funny show to check out? Probably an all time favourite of mine, Chuckle Vision. Uh, presented by the Truckle Brothers, Paul and Barry. Now these guys are, you could say they're entrepreneurs. Uh, in every episode they're doing different things and different jobs. Sometimes they run their own business, sometimes they're working for other people, and sometimes they're doing jobs for a rich businessman known as Dan the Van. Sometimes they also work for a man called Mr. No Slacking. They call him that because he's always telling people, and remember, no slacking. The Chuckle Brothers are really funny, they've always made me laugh and uh, I picked up some things from them like um, when they're moving heavy objects they always say to me, to you, to me, to you, so sometimes I say that. And uh, they've also done like uh, their own game show called To Me To You. Uh, I think there are some episodes available on YouTube. They've also done some live uh, performances on stage. So I actually saw one of their performances when I was about uh, seven or eight years old. The next funny show to take a look at is Maid Marian and Her Merry Men. So it's uh, set in the Robin Hood era, but it's not Robin Hood who's in charge, it's Maid Marian who's in charge. It's a very funny series, it's not just for kids, it's also for adults. As it was written by Tony Robinson, who a lot of you may know as Baldrick from the Blackadder franchise. And uh, in the series he plays the Sheriff of Nottingham. Also starring in the show is Danny John Jules, who a lot of you may know as the Cat from Red Dwarf. In the series he plays a character called Barrington, and uh, he does a lot of dance moves and singing. Staying with the comedy show, if you're into comedy, a good show to take a look at would be The Basil Brush Show. Now, for those of you who don't know, Basil Brush is a talking fox who tells lots of jokes, and when he does he then says boom boom, for example. What do you get if you cross a halibut with a steamroller? A flatfish. Boom boom. A basil brush first appeared on TV, I think in the late 60s, early 70s, but I've been watching the uh, newer shows. And uh, they're actually very good. I mean, there are some episodes that are a bit iffy, and uh, the only thing that puts me off is that they have a fake live audience. So it looks like it's a live audience, but it's not because they always laugh at random moments, moments that just aren't funny. But apart from that, it's still worth watching. There are some jokes that you might find very funny. In fact, I think Richard James from the Jerry Anson podcast has been in a theatre play with uh, one of the actresses from The Basil Brush Show. Now there is one comedy show that does have a live audience. At least I think it does. I've always wanted to do this. ka -ching! This show is about a teenager called Taj, who's an entrepreneur. So he's set up a secret business empire under the name of Rude Boy. The reason he's doing this is because he wants to make a million pounds for his mother. Because before his father passed away, he made a promise that he would look after the family. So he thought by making a million pounds, it should do the trick. But of course, he's not doing this alone. He has uh, friends who are helping him, so Danny and Seymour. It's a really funny series, again jokes that uh, children and adults would get. And of course there are some comedy shows that also have some drama in them. And a good example is the story of Tracy Beaker. Now some of the younger viewers may be aware of The Dumping Ground. Well this is the show that started it all off. For those of you who don't know, the series is based on a series of books by Jacqueline Wilson. It's all about a girl called Tracy Beaker who lives in a care home. She and all the other care kids call it the dumping ground because one, it's a dump, and two, all the kids that adults don't want are dumped there. While Tracy is there, either waiting to get fostered by a perfect family, or for her mother to return, she likes playing pranks and jokes on the other kids and the workers, but they can get her into a lot of trouble, and into fights with her arch enemy, Justine Littlewood. But there are times where Tracy knows that she's crossed the line and she's willing to put it right and she's willing to apologise. And like I mentioned, there is some drama in the series, so it actually focuses on some serious points like two of Tracy's friends, one of them is called Crash. It's a nickname because he smashes things every time he gets angry. He sort of 
picks it up from his father who's in prison. The other is Jackie. There's one episode where her grandfather passes away and she's having trouble trying to cope with the new changes. So it's definitely a show worth watching because although Tracy is very rebellious, you know, outright defiance, she does have a heart and it is in the right place when it needs to be. And I think we'll stop there for part one, so uh, join me next week for part two of some favourite TV shows that I watched and you may want to watch. I hope you've uh, found this video useful. Like I said, some episodes are on YouTube, so you'll be able to watch them. Some are not, you're going to have to dig deep to find them. And there are some that are on DVD. Uh, I know that these days people don't use DVDs anymore, but still, you might want to get them anyway. If you have enjoyed this uh, trip down memory lane, do give this video a thumbs up. And uh, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you know when the second part will be uploaded. And also, leave a comment down below if there are any shows that you watched, or did you watch the shows that I watched? Do let me know. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you next time. Over and out, or as they say on the Sooty Show, bye bye everybody, bye bye.